But for those of you who are here, we're going to jump into it. It's going to be very short, very sweet. Nah, it won't be. It'll be sweet, but I don't know about short. It'll be, probably. But anyway, uh, let's just jump into it. My name is Glendon Cameron. Welcome. Thanks for coming out today, spending your afternoon with me. Really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to talk about getting paid. This was from yesterday. You know, and this was the major task because this is what kills most entrepreneurs. They don't have enough lift off fuel, money, time, whatever to start the business. There are many people that have great ideals. Their ideals are awesome, but they're married. They have 2.5 kids and Boo Boo the cat and Aunt Mary living with them. Uh, there's someone that I'm working with right now who did an incredible thing this person due to a great deal of hard work saved up hundred and fifty thousand dollars of earned income and this person's 32 years old and how they did it is they had a job and they had a hustle and this person found me maybe four months ago hundred and fifty thousand dollars and they wanted to do a business and looked into it person was clean 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 no mortgage no car payment no credit card debt and one hundred fifty thousand dollars in the bank awesome right well family members found out about the money all of a sudden people needed help someone had to move in with him next thing you know since so and so is living with you why can't i live with you no so eventually this person who had $150,000 saved up, living clean, hardworking, knows the meaning of this, do your household budget down to the bubble gum, very financially straight in terms of managing money. Within um, the last five months, that's down to 50K. took this person six years to get that money saved matter of months it's gone <laughs> fortunately <laughs> there's a the business they're working on is going to be able to put them back where they were in probably 18 months but i'm going to talk about something because this is very very common this is very very common and do not take this as you should not help your family Take this as you should get yourself where you need to be before you help your family or you may never get to where you want to be. When I wrote the first storage auction book, there was some stuff going on in my family and I had to make a decision. And people are still talking shit about me today because I did it. Um, but I made a decision to put that book before family and uh, some people were not real happy about it. Well, essentially, I look back. And the day, and that's why I remember the day, July 17th, 2009, 3.30 p.m. If I had not made that decision, I would not be talking to you today. I would not have this life that I have. I would probably have a good life. I probably would have had to go back in the storage auction business, um, even though it probably wouldn't have been good for my health at the time. And, you know, it would have been the right thing in the public eye. But intrinsically, it would have been horribly wrong. And this is where this person is because, you know, everyone's there, uh, sucked up a lot of money. And the thing is, once you start the gravy train, people expect the gravy to keep on coming. So he's dealing with that right now. But essentially, you have got to manage your money. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you have got to manage your money. That is the biggest reason so many people cannot do anything because you cannot live the dream and chase the dream at the same time it's very very challenging it's very hard to do a rare person can pull it off most of us can't i couldn't when i wrote that first book i put myself on a very strict budget of 1500 bucks a month i didn't go out and actually if i did not hit my work goals i couldn't go out it was like okay you need to write and they were very low but it was, it, writing that book was so hard in the first time i mean it was like literally taking me a week to write 500 words I can do that in an hour now. But back then it was just hunt, peck, type. 
And the thing is, I had the word goals. If I did not hit that word goal by Friday, I wasn't going out. I was staying in and I was going to do it. And when I did go out, I had a very limited budget, and which, you know, for bartenders really wasn't that good. One drink, tip there, and maybe some water and maybe some, you know, peanuts or something. That was it. Because I had to stay focused. And the thing is, running a business and starting a business, if you get pulled in and sucked in by your creature comforts that you know you got to have certain things that could just really really destroy any chance your business has of being successful so just some things to, for you to think about if you are new on this last day uh, you'll need a sheet of paper pen or pencil and a calendar the task on the third leg and there's three legs the first leg was the first 10 days the second leg was the second 10 days and the third leg is these last six days they get a little longer, and that's one of the reasons that I'm just kahanka. You know, that's Hawaiian for chopping. No, I just made that up, but I'm putting the kahanka on it because essentially anyone that takes this program after you do, it's going to take them 30 something plus days to do this or longer. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. Yes, we have positive affirmations here because this is an action-based course. If you do the work, you will be successful. It is just that simple. If you don't do the work, you will not be that successful. It's just that simple. All right. Now, this is the this is what I say for last because this is what everyone wants to do. They want to get paid. They want the cheddar, the dinero, the ducats. But the problem is... You know, without the first two legs of 30 days to getting paid, yes, 30 days to getting paid, $2,500 a month, you got to put in the time and the action and the task. I got an email last night from a consulting client that just freaking tickles me to this death. Consulted with this person, um, wow, beginning of the month, beginning of the month, and yesterday was the 17th. The exact tone of this is because the person signed up for another session and they sold more from our last talk up to now than they did all Christmas. It's pretty, pretty freaking cool. It's pr I, I was just sitting there. It's like I want to see people be successful. And if I have to be, you know, your dad, you know, the mean dad, like the 70s dad, like, you know, you're a dumbass, you're, you know, and just tell you about yourself. I will because. Uh, during that consult, I had to break some truths to this person and his partner, his wife, his partner. And, you know, it was just like, wasn't happy with it. But it's like, this is where we are and this is what you need to do. And they did it and they're making money. That is what I do, what I do. I like um, dealing with people who are who are who really, really want to put in the work because understand working smart. You know, this course can help you work smart. But even working smart, you still have to put in some hard work. You have to put in some time. You have to put in some effort. Oh, and since I'm going to make this announcement for the new people, if you have a question based on anything that I say, just go ahead in your module and put in your question. And when I come out of the presentation, I will address it. So let's talk about getting paid. Now, this is the second day of getting paid. There was the first day we're going to talk about your business throwing off cash. At some point, you want to pull money off your business. Uh, there are some people who have the ability for a business to go on for years and they never pull cash out of it. Uh, I have met someone recently who has a business that's 10 years old and he's never pulled a dime out of it. It's his retirement plan. He said, either I'm just going to live off the cash flow the business makes or I'm going to sell it. But, you know, because he has another business that, you know, supports his. I mean, let's let's just be real. He's rolling. <laughs> he's rolling. It's very easy for him not to pull any money out of that business because his other business that he runs, it does very, very well. But to think about this, how many people who have a business that's doing very, very well will start another business and completely leave it pristine, never pull a dime out of it? He says that business has not made a penny because he puts the money back into investments because Part of his business plan is the building that the business is in, he, he, he's buying it. So it doesn't have to make any money. As long as it pays that note of that property, he's building an asset. 
And it's a very, very important lesson to really, really learn about how you can set yourself up. Because, you know, people just tell me stuff. It's just amazing. I'm just sitting down there. It's like I'm the long lost Uncle Lewis or something. And you're just saying, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, if I actually didn't spend as much money and I crunked down my expenses, I could probably pull like 20, 30 grand a month off of it. But he said, that's not my plan, which is once again, what is your plan? That's the most important thing, because yesterday people's like, you know, how to pull money out of your business. The better question is, when do you pull money out of your business? And that goes back to living a life of design and intent. That goes back to planning. When your stuff is planned a lot of the questions answer themselves. Now, this is to help you mature your business faster. Because if your goal is to make, you know, you're starting this business. Let's take it. Let's take business A. Because part of this thing is if you go through this course, you're going to start three or four businesses as part of the course regimen. And as I defined, there's a difference between a business and there's a difference between a hustle. Typical, typically, Typically, a hustle is short term, matter of hours or just a few years, whereas a business can be perpetual. It just goes on and on and on. You can pass it down to your kids. Now, some hustles can matriculate into a business. It just really, really depends because as we live in a very disruptive society where things change before you. Uh, they just change. Things change so quickly. So something that you're working on, that's like a hustle. And I'll give you an example. I don't know if anyone's heard of Bathing Ape. That was a business that actually became a hustle uh, when the rapper started wearing it because you would see it because Lil Wayne got in all this trouble because he was on the cover of his magazine and he had a Bathing Ape belt buckle on. But for many people who didn't really look closely, they thought it said rape, which actually enhance the company's brand but they went ahead and be, you know this business and they hit hustle stratosphere i mean the t-shirts were going for two three hundred bucks on ebay i bought i'm in atlanta i was in the storage auction business i had many rappers or wannabe rappers or concert promoters and they all had that gear so that's that's i was just amazed at what those shirts would go for because this was the secret ingredient they would do a line of t-shirts and they would be limited distribution and a limited number of t-shirts. So once that t-shirt was done, that was it. You couldn't get any more. So if you wanted that one, you had to buy it used. Brilliant. So typically how to mature your business faster is to bring some hustle components on. And what's the hustle component? Set goals. Once reach, set new goals. This is perpetual. This is how you mature your business faster because many people have business assumptions for more so than business plans and that's why i'm always saying business most business plans are like moby dick great works of fiction because if you go through this course you're going to get your numbers and you're going to get some experience so when you sit down to do your business plan you're not doing it based on assumptions you're doing it based on data that was geared from actually doing something a lot of times you may have an idea for business a and as you're walking down the road, you're like, hmm, this isn't really working. Let's go over here. And then next thing you know, you have business B, which is a better fit for you. That is the benefit of action. So to really mature your business, you're going to set goals. Now, this is this is actually the secondary part. And this is something that I discovered maybe in the last six years. The goal part is the secondary part. This is the magic ingredient. This is the jelly beans. This is the rub the bottle and get the genie to come out. It's the process. It's the process is more important than the goals. Anyone can say, I have a dream. I have a goal. That's real easy to come up with goals and processes or announce. That's easy. But the process, that's the hard part. That is a very, very hard part because you know, my favorite college football team is University of Alabama and the coach Nick Saban, you know, who catches much heat for his mercurial ways, has a process. Now, he runs into problems when he meets someone like a Les Miles or a Gus Malzahn, who have who are like the Jedi on crack. 
they they and the thing is Gus Malzahn has a process but his process is kind of like a magic eight ball you know you spin it well we're going to go this way we're, you you have no idea which way it's coming out which creates a problem for someone who's very systematic and formula driven now the thing is for your process that's not going to be a problem because we're talking about extremely high level college athletics most business people are not going to go to the lengths that these coaches go to. They're not going to do it. It's just not. Even though they have more at stake. Actually, that's not true. These coaches have their livelihood at stake. So essentially, what I learned from Nick Saban is really, really focus on the process. Set your goal. Okay. Then walk away. Then, okay, what is the process of getting this goal? The goal is there. You know, is you just start really hammering away at the process. Now, let me give you an example. And this is what I'm talking about. I learned in the last six years. The goal. You know, I'll use one of mine. So I wanted to write a book. Uh, the process is 250 words a day for a year is 91,250 words in a year. That process is way more important than I want to write a book. Because without that process and the implementation of the process and diligence of continually monitoring the process, like, you know, when people go out to sea and they want to, like, sail from New Zealand to Africa, that's a process. There are certain things that they have to do. If they do not do these things, they're not going to get there. So sailboat's nice. The water's nice. But without the process, and that's actually an amount of those, those actually are races. I don't know if you've ever been to San Francisco or someplace where they have races. Shit's pretty fun to watch. But essentially, the process of what you do, how you do, how you set it up is going to be way more important than the goal itself. And the goal is extremely important. But the process and, you know, for those of you who may be book lovers or writers, when I said this in a this was a few years ago because someone invited me to speak to their group, I said, compared to writing the book, the, the book's easy compared to the marketing. The marketing is what makes the book sell. I'll give you an example. Fifty Shades of Grey. I have not read it, but many people in my circles have. And they talked about the writing is not stellar. I don't know. Didn't read the book. But the woman wrote three long books that spoke to an audience. She had a process. She put them out there. And at one point, those books were making, I'm not kidding you, a million dollars a day. Yes, globally, they were making one million dollars a day. And I think they went on for like 18 months. So her process Whatever her writing skills, like I said, I can't say one way or another because I haven't read the books, but I do recognize the process. I do recognize the marketing. I do. Rec There's many things that she did that were right that many writers don't do. But she had a process. And, you know, there were some people that was like, well, she got lucky. She's anyone that sits down and writes a book that, you know, take luck out of it. That's like someone coming up to you and you're in the second year of your business and your business is making the money that you want to make, and then you can pull off the money that you want to live to make to live the life you want. And someone comes up to you, and you know, say you're in your Porsche, you're driving a Porsche from your business, and someone says, You got lucky. You would be ultimately insulted, and you should be. Luck had nothing to do with it. You set a goal, you create a process, you worked hard, you got there. That wasn't luck. Many people like to say, um, you know, take my experience with the storage auction thing. I started in 2009. The shows did not come on until 2011. I didn't know the shows were coming on, but I did know that the business was salacious. I knew that there was a lot of intricate intrigue about it, and I went with it. It wasn't luck. It wasn't luck that I had 250 videos up before the first storage auction show came on because I put in the work had that process and the process came by if i want to sell books i need to do videos so me doing what i needed to do to sell books put me in a very good position so when the shows came on i was able to capitalize because there was a few blog posts on uh, newspaper articles like he, he was first 
because I was I had such a long lead time. So anyone that tells you that you got lucky or and don't even tell yourself that because a friend of mine said, you know, she got lucky because, you know, she does uh, Amazon FBA and she found a killer deal. There was these for some reason, Target had these boost mobile phones for nine ninety nine and they sell for 60 bucks on Amazon. She went and got 20 of them. And like four days later, the price went back up to 60 bucks and they're like 50. Put, they're gone. She already sold them all <laughs> like a week. They're gone. And she's like, well, I got lucky. No, you didn't get lucky. You, you she went home, went to sell, got the sales paper, saw that it was a, like a deal. It was nine ninety nine, and normally it was 60 bucks. And she took her butt to the store and got them. That's not luck. That's not luck. That's activity. That's action. That's hustle. That is not luck. So, and the reason I'm really harping on luck is like, if you get in your mind that you need luck to be successful, you will circumvent and you will prevent yourself from being successful until that thing called luck shows up, whatever that may be for you. So just pull it out your vocabulary. If you're hardworking, you're doing what you need to do and you're following your goals and stuff, luck has nothing to do with it. Now, this is also part of the secret ingredient become process driven then goal driven that's something i had to learn in the last six years because when you when when you just put your head down you set your goal because that creates the reason for you to create the process so that's very important but once again the process itself is more important than the goal because give you another example and i actually used them in one of the earlier webinars for this series see those seahawks their offensive game plan is not really intricate. It really isn't. You know what they're going to do. They're just going to do it very effectively. Uh, some teams they couldn't run on, but most teams they could. It's like Seattle Seahawks. What they're going to do? They're going to run. They're going to pound the rock. They're going to pound the rock. They're going to pound the rock. Then they're going to throw on you. That's what they're going to do. Uh, going back to Auburn, the team I love to hate. They don't have that many plays on their offensive side, but their execution is awesome. You know what they're going to (laughs) do. You know what they're going to do. You just can't stop it because the execution of the process is so good. So you can have a janky goal, but your execution can be awesome and you can get results from that. And you can have like a great goal that's very worthy, but your process is just jacked up and you get nowhere. Or you don't get as close to where you want to be because your um, process is just corrupt or contaminated. There's something wrong with the process. So once you set your goal, spend, you know, spend 10 percent of your time setting your goal and then 90 percent of your time working on the process. Once you get that process together, then you're just you're, you're printing money. You are literally printing money at will. One of the things I learned when I was doing this. I didn't look at all of the other writers. I looked at the Internet marketers because I know of many writers. I mean, back in the day, I actually knew a lot of well-known names before they hit it big because the writing community was just very, very small. I know exactly what some of these people made. I, I know what kind of advances they got. I saw the checks. These people, most of them went back to working full time jobs. Because they're writing, let me let me be really unclear with that. The amount of books that they sold was enough for them to retire. But because of where they were in the equity distribution chain, you know, I've said this before, I'll, I'll give it to you again. In your mind, imagine a pie chart. Take a line and go straight down the middle and take 50%. That goes to the retailer. So you're left with 50% of the cover price. Then you take another line and kind of arc it a little bit. And that's 27%. That goes to the publisher. So 77% is gone from the cover price. Okay. So, you know, you're thinking, oh, okay, I got 23%. No, not really. You got an agent and probably an attorney. So take another 10 to 13% off for those two. And that's what's left over is yours. So you're getting like 10% to 17%. If you were able to, and that's one of the reasons that, you know, I haven't put any of the new stuff of business type stuff on Amazon or any place because 
I look at my pie chart. I mean, literally, most writers would have to sell 30, 40, 50, 60 books to get what I make off of one. And I'm talking about the $9 book because people don't do math and they don't really look at this thing. And I'm not a genius, but I did peep out that for a book to sell, you must market. And I, you know, I went through many, you know, and this is all with process because, you know, working on my process. When I put my books on Amazon and then put a link under the YouTube channel straight to Amazon, my sales went up. But another thing that happened because I was observing the process, so did the sales of my competitors. Because Amazon is Amazon. Love Amazon. Doesn't, I don't hate Amazon. I'm just giving you how they operate. When you send someone to that site, whatever's in their cookie, browser cookie is going to pop up. And they go to my book, then the, the other books are going to pop up. It's like the person who looked at this book, they looked at this other book. My books had a high price point. So I, I've actually saw it. People were like, look at my book, and then they go buy three or four of the other books. And I, I studied that, and it was just like, it was very infuriating. I was like, wait a minute, I'm like the hoe here. I need to have my pimp hat on. I'm the hoe here. And that's one of the reasons that I didn't put anything new on Amazon. And I started directing traffic straight to internet properties that I owned. The first two months that I did that, my income tripled. My income tripled and I sold less. It's all about the equity. It's about the process. And, you know, I'm just in there. I mean, it just kind of really boggled me because, like I said, my income tripled. It literally tripled just from a simple thing of one avoiding social. Uh, there was a uh, voting or avoiding social expectations, because if you're writing a book, everyone said, well, hey, put it on Amazon. You'll get a lot of sales there because it's on Amazon. That is one of the biggest lies in the world. Just putting your book on Amazon does not mean you're going to get sales. Actually, it'll just be on Amazon and make it lost among the millions of other books. So by avoiding social expectations and working on my process, I was able to do quite well. There was a book called The 17 Day Diet. And I studied this book because I, I, I studied a lot of businesses. For the longest time, they, their book was not on Amazon. There was only one place you can get it. And I know why they did it. Because they got enough juice where they got on national television. 17 died. Psh, go straight to their website. They was, you know, using all of their marketing moxie to go straight to their website. And then once the craze kind of petered out, then they put their book on Amazon. I know exactly why. Because they were getting 100%. On Amazon, they were going to get like it was going to be, it's going to be more than half. Because well, the way Amazon operates is they get if they're selling the book if they're the uh, seller record it's like fulfilled by amazon they're going to get their 30 percent plus other fees so it's a big chunk when you think about it especially in volume you know 35 percent over a million units is a lot of freaking money so that's one of the things you have to understand and you're like you know that's my process and that's and there's something else and someone had put in the group today and uh, this is something I knew about for a long time. Computers can write magazine articles. They can write blog posts. This has been going on since I've been in the business. It's just in the beginning. It was You could tell because it was so stiff. And I knew in just a matter of time, you're going to have computers. that's going to write a book. It's happening. It's happening as we speak. There may be a computer that can do it. It's just not well known yet. So this is one of the reasons that conundrum publishing went to conundrum media because a computer may be able to write a book but can it do a video can it do a podcast eh? eh? see what i mean so that's one of the things about creating value about myself because i know the future is coming whether i want it to come or not and there's going to be a lot of writers who are going to get and we probably have about seven maybe ten years before it may happen sooner, but I'm, I'm looking at a time frame about seven, 10 years before it really you're just going to read a book that was written by a computer and you won't even know it. And that's one of the reasons that you have to really stay on top of technology. And you really have to pay attention to this stuff because I saw that and I was like, you know, it's just going to get better and better. It's not going to get worse and worse. It's going to get better and better. Kind of like voice recognition software, which was horrible five years ago. Now it's on every cell phone and it's great. So 
this is one of the things about when you're doing your process, looking at your business, looking at variables and not just going, oh, you know, this is what's going to happen. No, it's like, OK, this is what's happening. I can go here. I can go there. I can go there and I can make deviations and variations in my process to counter in that. Because the thing is, many businesses are going to be it's going to be very hard for many businesses to be in business 30, 40, 50 years because of the level of disruption. But if you have a good business model or a good business platform, like going back to the guy who's got this business and he's paying off this building. Okay. Once he gets that building paid off, he can start another business for cheap because one of his biggest expenses, rent, mortgage is gone. More options, way more options. I have a friend that owns a consignment store. She bit the nugget 2006 and she started buying the building. The mortgage was 7,000 a month. Well, here it is, 2014. She probably would be paying about ten, eleven thousand a month in rent if she had continued to rent. So she saved herself three to four G's a month, which is thirty-six to fifty grand a year. As time goes on, she's going to save more and more because, you know, she's keeping the business. She loves the business, so she'll probably have someone running. She just won't be there. But I think she did like a twenty-year, yeah, she did a twenty-year mortgage, and she is. You know, with the halfway point, I guess, or close to it. Yeah, you know, next year, yeah, you know, next year or the year should be at the halfway point. So, these are the things that happen when you look at your business and you have a process for your business. All right, now this is your task: break down your business down to processes. They may be good, they may be bad, but you have processes. Rank your process in uh, value to your business. There's going to be one that's going to be a very core driver of income. That's going to be number one. And then what's secondary will be number two and so on and so forth. Then evaluate which process needs work. And you're going to take a week and work on one process at a time to have a better feel for it. So essentially what you're going to do is identify, rank and groom your processes. Because what did I say about the Seahawks? Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do. Everyone, 49, they knew what they were going to do. They knew. Everyone knew. Denver knew what they were going to do. Couldn't stop them. Because their process and their execution was superb. And you get your process and execution superb to your business. Because like I said, my, all my processes still need work. I'm still working on them. But once you get a better feel for them and when, you know, when someone says, what, where did most of your income come from, comes from and you go, oh, it's this process. You may not tell them, but in your head, you're like, it's this and this is two and this is three. And this will lead you to make better business decisions. This will lead you to get rid of stuff that's costing you money that's not effective. That is the value of doing this task. Okay. And I am out. And let's see whether we have in the way of questions. <laughs> what the hell? For a million, I pay a stack to a couple of bounces and throw the leeches back in the cesspool. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you got to be straight in order to help others. Broke people don't hire people and people and broke people don't help people financially. No, they don't. Uh, Vince, would you recommend to someone just getting started to try marketing someone else's product on commission to build up their marketing skills before creating their own product? No, I would not. You create your own product. Even if you're horrible, you're going to learn more by doing your own stuff because this is the thing. You'll learn how to create your own product. There's a process there. Then with the marketing, you'll learn what works, what doesn't work. No, you're better off doing your own thing. Because the thing is, when you recommend someone else's product, unless it's a physical product that you can go out and get and have in your hand, all kind of stuff can happen. I mean, there are people who make millions doing internet marketing, but my preference would be do your own stuff. Uh, Jasmine. Hey, Glenn, and I found out why you get those brilliant ideas where you're out walking and doing some other mind tests. Look up super conscious on YouTube. It's like your subconscious mind times 1000 and it's activated only when you're not trying. 
I'm going to write that down. Because it frequently, I mean, it happens all of the time. And I think I kind of, I think I kind of talked about that because it's like when you're not really trying, stuff just oozes up. Appreciate that. I'll look that up after the webinar. Thank you very much. <laughs> Soldier Boy endorsed the hell out of Baving Apes. Yep. Look at him now. Tony, luck, labor under correct knowledge and work. Hmm. That's interesting. I've never heard that before. I like that. Edward, much success with the next webinar. Showing up has been a great learning and doing experience. Everything learned and done here should be done better and continue after the day. Much gracias. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne, Glenn, I want to thank you for this presentation. I am pleased to be part of the beta program. And once I'm back on track, which is going to be soon, I'll be a consult client. Just a simple task of rethinking how we do things has helped me tremendously. Awesome. Oh, uh oh, this is Chris. Got bit in the ass by eBay, researching other avenues of distribution. Found app, offer up, and storage website that will let you post for free. Hey, you know, you never know until you try. Uh, this is the thing. Everyone thinks that I just hate eBay just out of the blackness of the bottom of my heart. And that's not the case. I used to be in love with eBay. It's just they have inmates running it. I mean, it's just one of the weirdest companies I've ever seen in my life that so many people who make decisions that impact what you do and how you sell don't sell, never sold, have no clue to us. I mean, it's just essentially if they didn't have PayPal, they would have been bankrupt or they would have changed their business practices years ago. Sorry to hear that. Uh, you know, I don't really pour glee in when my peeps get bit, but uh, it happens. Uh, when is the Power 6 webinar? I'll put that out. I haven't quite decided yet, but it's coming. Another way, eBay and PayPal are not accountable the way your bank is liable if they screw up. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. It's kind of crazy. All right, so essentially... What's going to happen is this is the beta. This, this, you know, actually, I went a little long because it's actually going to take most people more than 30 days to do this. I am going to put some other little wrinkles here. And, you know, since everyone's on the email list, you'll get it when I get it together. But I'm looking at for 30 days to 2500 to turn it into an incubator of ideals. That's kind of one thing that's going on. And then another thing is that spot's going to be strictly business you know business ideas business developments so on and so forth and the hustler hustle university is going to become hustler mastermind uh there are some people who will stay there are some people that will go but it's going to become a totally different group it's going to be everyone in there is going to be working on the business you know so it's going to be totally different and doot, 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 for those of you who are here let's do this uh For folks who want to join, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it until lifetime. That's 400 bucks for lifetime access. And I'm going to do that for, and I'm sending this to everybody. So there you are. Um, I'll leave that for lifetime access to the end of the month because there's other stuff that's coming. I'm not making that announcement, but you will see it once I clean up my links and stuff on YouTube. Uh, okay, Marcy went to the site and it had three nine three nine nine lifetime and seven nine nine lifetime. The difference is I was gonna do seven nine nine lifetime, but actually, let's see. It's you know just to uh, I'll sign in later because I'm gonna have to put stuff in. But essentially, three ninety nine and seven nine nine are the same thing. I just didn't change it because originally it was gonna be three ninety nine for a year. And then it was going to be seven ninety nine for a lifetime. But I had a few people like, "Look, dude, I'm not ready, but I'll be ready." So I'm just going to like lifetime access for three ninety nine to the end of the year. I mean, I'm sorry, to the end of the month. Chris found the processing app called Flint. Yeah, I know about Flint. Yeah, this this is the cool thing about all of these processing apps. 
There's so much competition. I'll tell you what used to happen to a person going for a merchant account as short as seven, eight years ago. If you didn't have good credit, you couldn't get a merchant account. They would, you know, you had to have a score like 720, 760, and to get your account and to get unlimited processing with Flint, with Square, with go to there's so many processors now that they can't shut you out for having bad credit which i always thought was kind of like what does one thing have to do to another because you don't charge something until someone buys something you know so i love that uh vince what happens to us who signed up for the 30 day package i'm going to go through and manually address that because I'm going to go to the lifetime membership because it's just better because this is give you an example of process and putting yourself out there like this whole thing was beta right I just learned that most people appreciate and want the one fee deal versus the monthly deal I mean the people who signed up for lifetime access to the folks who signed up for monthly was 10 to 1 I mean you can't ignore a number like that so uh, this week I'm going to go through there and let everybody know Another way, might be a good idea to cover the differences in your various program on the central site. The emails were plentiful and somewhat confusing to an old student in life. Yeah, that's some, once again, going back to uh, my processes need cleaning up because that's one of the reasons I just focused on this because I was able to look at it. And the thing is, this is what I've noticed about selling stuff online from Craigslist to eBay. You can take all day long and put in concise, detailed, information on what you're selling and most people are going to ignore it there's going to be going back to the pareto rule 80 20 rule is the commonly known 20 percent is going to read it 80 percent is going to ignore it <laughs> so what i learned is just try to keep it very brief because the thing is this is like the only thing that's been really going on this month but you know i i do take that under advisement Yep, uh, keep it simple because when you get all complicated, because probably what I will do if I do websites, because this is something else that we're going to talk about in 30 days. Websites are kind of like placeholders. Uh, there are people who are doing great things with websites, but you know, going through some of the things from the earlier version of 30 days to 2500 bucks, platforms do much better because from doing this, I got probably like a thousand email addresses that I didn't have before which was freaking awesome and actually after a few days that i haven't covered yet i haven't pulled down the uh the data <laughs> david thanks to you i think part of your master plan is to keep changing all your products and pricing to keep us chasing after you and keep us on our toes i get it actually that's kind of partially true and it's partially not information becomes obsolete or not as effective after a certain point because of the internet. I'm going to give you an example. I started seeing people put in storage auction forums verbatim posts out of my book. I mean, I was just like, you know, it's just going to be a matter of time for the whole books out there. Now, the thing is, that information is fractured and it's, it's like, okay, here's some over here, here's some over here. But what it does is it creates in the mind of people that the information is on the internet, which is not a lie. It's just not put together in any kind of format then that means you got to go find it, figure out if it's relevant, put it together, absorb it and use it, which takes a phenomenal amount of time. So it's out there, but you know, you got to do a lot of studying. <laughs> Dwayne, I enjoy being part of your focus in your process. Yeah, this was pretty fun. Uh, actually, there's going to be more of this. It's just for different stuff. Uh, Chris, I looked at your storage learning pack can you go over this real quick uh this is my thing with the storage auction business unless you have two to five thousand cash and you have a truck i wouldn't mess with it because the days of you know you being able to make you know an extra 10 15 grand a year just from a car and not a truck that's over it's too much competition out there there's more competition out there than there's ever been and you know things have kind of come back to normal but another thing that has happened with the storage auction business is more people are paying up than ever. And a lot of those juicy units that I got, people aren't getting those units. But essentially, uh, that's one of the reasons because this, this whole package was at one point. 
like 99 bucks. And this is one of the reasons, and this is one of the things you learn about, you know, looking at your business. You know that this stuff is going to, I'll do that. So it's like 15 bucks now, you know, since you're here, if you want it, I'll send it to everybody. All right, um, Byron, can you define what a platform is opposed to a website? YouTube's a platform. Facebook's a platform. iTunes is a platform. Uh, podcasting is a platform. Having a Facebook group is a platform. A platform is anything that you can get interaction and more distribution with less effort. Because, you know, let's see. Let me, let me show you something. We'll go to YouTube. I'm going to put in teacup. All right, I'll put in teacup pigs. Not, you know, extremely pop. Well, okay. Uh, here we go. You can't get this kind of distribution on a website. I just put in teacup, just something that came to my head, and you've got half a million views. You can't get that with a website without, unless the website's old and well established and a lot of backlinks. But you can go out in your backyard and do something stupid tonight and put it on YouTube and Good Morning America could be calling you next week. You can't get that with a website. So YouTube's the number one platform. Then podcasting's number two. Then Facebook groups are number three. A platform is anything that you can get this kind of juice with less effort. Just not going to happen with a website. Because websites, you have to get traffic because you can go out and spend 10 grand on a website. But how do people find that website? Because the way that YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, the way they're set up, it's just easy distribution. And notice the thing, easy distribution. That's why Facebook works. Oh, I like this. Hit share. You send it to your friends. You don't have to do anything overly complicated. And that's one of the things about the net. It's become easier and easier to share stuff and to do stuff, which makes people lazy. Uh, Jonathan, hey, Glenn, I'm currently still on the task of cranking out more business ideas, one of which is to be natural cleaning products, health, and beauty. Have you sold a product that you created through another business, for example, selling handmade soaps at garage sales, or would it be better to allow the product to stand on its own? Uh, good question. I actually... Sold new furniture at a garage sale. I've sold brand new products with used products. It's really a matter of marketing. I'll give you an example. When I bought a unit that had a bunch of batteries, you know, at first I was kind of pissed until I looked at how much batteries cost. So I put an ad that said batteries on Craigslist and I renewed it several times because people will come in and they'll get like five or 10 or sometimes I had one lady, she got like a hundred. She's like, oh God, these are great. Give me a great deal. And we're selling you stuff. So you can sell different things in different spots. Like if it's a flea market, there's an expectation there's going to be various products because we create an indoor flea market. It, it really depends on what the item is. But could you sell handcrafted soap at a garage sale? Yeah. I have seen people sell soap. I have, well, not soap. I mean, cupcakes, barbecue with a garage sale. One guy was selling beer, which was illegal, but nobody cared. Uh <laughs> Yeah, you can sell anything. Uh, the raffle drawing is next Monday. And for anybody that wants to be part, and it's a contest now because, you know, have to, let's see. Where the heck is it? No, 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 no. That was for the group. Uh, actually, screw it. Since this is the last day, I'm going to do this. T kick. Let's see. Actually, I was wrong. Square. <laughs> Tony, I feel I be feeling like a hoe. Chris, thank you, Glenn. This month, my fence go down. 
Let's see. My offense went, went go down 250 unexpected vet bill, 800 bucks. Thanks to hustling in this class, paid the bills, no sweat. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, Tracy, thanks for the webinar. I got a lot of it. I may hire you soon for a consult. My interest is in writing. Will you have future programs focused on that? I'm also interested in audiobooks. I used to do voiceovers back in the 80s and 90s, but never got involved with audiobooks. Ooh, you're going to love this, Tracy. All right. This is just my opinion. This is my opinion. Since reading requires effort, I think audiobooks, because the big thing for audiobooks has been the price. And then another thing has been the production. I think audiobooks are going to be huge in the future because they require, you know, going back to what I'm saying about easy, that when the price point of an audiobook is under $10 consistently, you will see more. And then the compression rates. Well, with streaming, actually, people don't even have to host stuff on their phones or devices anymore. So if you already have a nice voice um, and you start now with your books, because this this is the thing with building your tribe, you can start doing your books and stuff now. I think uh, in the future, yes, uh, there's going to be because this is what I got from doing this, that I am probably going to do enhance how to create digital products course that I was going to do in Hustle University, but I'm going to put that in uh, 30 days to 2,500 bucks. And that's one of the reasons that it's 400 bucks lifetime because there's great stuff that's coming. What I see is, and there's a lot of people that are having problems selling books they were doing really well. And the thing is, ebooks exploded in proportion to the number of iPads and phones that were selling, which is kind of leveled out. Everybody, who do you know that doesn't have a smartphone or iPad or something? Some people have all three. They all have the phone, smart pad, computer, whatever. So that's done. And a person can only read so many books per week, per month, per year, because most people are not readers. Why does, you know, let's go here. You know, it's two minutes long. It's 405,000 views. It's um, it'll be, it's two years old. This video is two years old. I guarantee you, there are a lot of writers who do not have, because I'll tell you, I've only sold like 17,000 books lifetime. But since, you know, the going back to the pie chart, I was getting most of the money. It was really good. Whereas if I had a traditional book deal, I would have to have a job or another business. There was no way I could live off that. So definitely, if you're a creative person, this is going to be some awesomeness for you. Uh, Brian, when you put a book into Create Space to sell on Amazon, is there's no compete agreement that you will not sell the same material privately? No, 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 no. The deal with Amazon is if you sell the book on Amazon, your deal with Amazon is you will sell it for the same price wherever else you sell it. So if you want to sell it for nine bucks on your website, you need to be selling it for nine bucks on Amazon. Now, interesting thing about that. I actually broke that rule because I didn't know it until someone pointed it out to me like three years ago. I was selling the book for 99 bucks on Amazon due to how much they take. And I was selling it for $59.95 on my website. I did that for two years. Never heard a word from Amazon. Essentially, I never got caught. <laughs> but you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Holy shit, look at your YouTube notifications. <laughs> Yeah, I get a lot of activity there. Uh, Tony, all BS aside, thanks for the clarity on how to get there. At least it seems doable now. You just have to figure out what it is. That's kind of the question. What do you want to do? Uh, here's David. Voiceover talent on Fiverr is both awesome and easy as a buyer. Fiverr is now going to be a core part of my process for future digital products. You can get a lot of cool stuff on Fiverr. Um, Marcy, Glendon, you put a fire under me. You put a fire under my, thank you. I'm going to do a little hustling now for contract work, but I'm looking at it as a business owner. No emotion to the outcome. See you on the good side. Very cool. Uh, Tracy, is there a platform for short audiobooks like an audio ebook? That's the interesting thing. Like, um, let's see. Let's go with Gumroad. And this is why I like Gumroad. All right. I can 
stream a video. Let's see. All right, just quick thing because I haven't really talked about Gumroad a lot. If you um, have a product, let's let's say a multimedia product. Say you have a a book, and I think this is going to come. You have a video, or yeah, you have a movie trailer. You have the book. You have the you have the ebook and the audio book. With Gumroad, you can package all that stuff together and sell it. With Amazon, you have to put your ebook and print book. Uh, yeah, let me back up. Say you want to sell your print book, your ebook, your audio book, and have a video of the book in one place. You can package that as a bundle and sell it from Gumroad. If you want to do it on Amazon, you have to put your print book on Amazon, and then you have to put your ebook on Kindle, then you have to put your audio book on Audible. And everybody's going to get a big share. But say you came up with this book and you want to make more money. This goes back to adding value. No one's going to pay now more than nine to 15 bucks for a book. It's just not very few people, you know, maybe 20 on certain books, but nine to 15. That's where most books fall. But say you wanted to get $30 for your book. Well, I'm just giving you a movie. Well, Beyonce just did it. She, um, did the videos and the music all as a bundle and it was just so much value that a lot of people bought it. I didn't buy it because you know I'm not I don't hate her but I don't love her either but the thing is I understand the business premise of what she did because if you look at let's see let's give you let me think let me think let me think uh, let me give you Hmm. Essentially, we're talking about new territory. Essentially, you can create that platform yourself. You can definitely create that platform because if you look at. All right, well, let's go back to Gumroad. Let's go back. Uh, I came out of there. Because the thing is, I'm at Gumroad and I'm I'm switching up like. I use Gumroad for certain things, and then I use, let's talk about Square. Because Square up, and just to give you the benefit. Like, I can't sign that. But essentially, you've got Square Market. And this isn't like, it's new to me. I've been using it for a few months. But essentially, if you want to sell a physical product, like say you had something that you want to sell on Craigslist. To someone in another state, but you didn't want to use PayPal, you can use Square Up. You can go into Square Market, create a product, put a link, shoot them a link, and they'll pay with their credit card. And since Square isn't like PayPal, you don't have the scammers over there yet. They'll probably come. But I've been really, really pleased with Square because, like I said, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna continue to use Gumroad. I love Gumroad. Gumroad is great for you know your products and stuff. But with Square like for services, uh, for, you know, the membership of this course, because I did Gumroad for some reason. I didn't use the Square link. Because actually, the Square link, let me show it to you. Hold on. I'm probably, I left both of them up there, but I could probably just have one. Now, this is the, the square link going back to what Marcy was talking about yeah because those both are the same thing so you want the 399 but what's really cool about this is you get paid the next day because square used to be like two to four days and I've been with square since day one and you get paid like like I had someone buy something like 930 and the next morning I woke up, it was in my checking account. So definitely a lot of cool stuff. Uh, Fiverr <laughs> is this. You can get all kinds of stuff done on Fiverr. It's wonderful. Uh, Brian. Brian, can you make money by creating audiobooks for books you don't write? Oh, hell yeah. All right. 
l- let me just explain something to you. Most creative people are not business people. Most. Not you know, ain't half. No, most. That's changing. There are more writers, painters, song artists, people who are business people now than ever before. But most are still just creative souls that just want to create and don't want to do the business in. If you create a process and you can say, look, I like your book. I think it's great. I think it'll be an awesome audio book. But this is it. This is I got a contract. What I want to do, I want the audio rights to your book. And what I'll do is give you 30 percent. Another thing is this is how you get them. I will not charge you anything until I won't charge you anything. You'll get money. It's just like I want to copy your book. I want you to sign this contract that I can create the audio book. Then you go ahead and create the audio book, put it on Gumroad and sell a snot out of it and kick them 30 percent back. Or you can give them a one time fee. You can go online and find awesome books and do audio books and put them up and sell them because I'm a member of several writing groups. And this is a big problem. It's like there's one lady. She's been working on her audio book for the last 18 months. Sitting in a done. So, yeah. Uh, Jonathan Johnson Square for large items. Yeah, I sold something for forty two hundred bucks using Square. Didn't have an issue. Oh yeah, definitely. There, there's all kinds of ways that you can make money out here. I mean, this is you know I, I just want to say thanks to everybody that came out and been here for the whole process because it opened my eyes to a lot of stuff because. There's things that I know about, but I wasn't doing and doing this course forced me to use those things. I'm like, oh, okay. Because like I said, there is so much opportunity out here. It's ridiculous because, you know, just just to give you a breakdown, I get a check from a vidcaster. I get, you know, something from Square. Whenever I make a sale, I get that instantly. I get paid from Gumroad every two weeks. I get paid from YouTube. I get paid from Amazon and I get paid from Kindle. And, you know, it's just any one of those, if I really like pushed it, could support me. But I put most of my effort into stuff that benefits me more directly. So when I do the YouTube videos, you go to either Gumroad or Square because they're only taking like a small percentage for the transaction. And it's freaking awesome for what they give you. Uh, Is poor credit an issue for Square? Um, Not to my knowledge. And that, you bring up a good point because I was going to do a course and I started it and I need to do it. It's like how to go ahead and fix your credit because after my divorce, my shit was jacked. I mean, I have no problem saying that. And then about eight months, you know, I went from real basement stuff like 440 to 720. You can fix your credit. And if you're going to do something like retail arbitrage with uh, Amazon, this is because there's I'm a member of a few groups and. There are people in there, they don't have credit cards, and they're taking these cash advances from Cabbage. And Amazon will lend you money if you've got good numbers. But the interest rate is ridiculous. But no, I don't think uh, credit's an issue for that. I'll let you know. Uh, Today I went on a sourcing run. My daughter's starting a company. Uh, and it's going to be Amazon FBA. It's going to, you know, the ideal is 50% wholesale, 50% retail arbitrage. So as I go through that process, I'll be talking about that in 30 days to $2,500 per month. Yeah, as <laughs> Trace, I went to a doctor's appointment and they used Square for a payment because it's so simple. You sign up in five minutes and you're done. Traditional merchant account apps took a week or two. Back in the day. Uh, <laughs> no, I would actually make an audio book for, for porn and a DVD player. And there's actually a part two and three. I just haven't done them yet. Uh, we're going to, in Eddie, uh, we're going to be talking about how the, you know, a lot of stuff's going to go down at 30 days, 2,500. But what I'm learning is a focused, concentrated course is much better than over here, over there. And, you know, once again, this is something that just came from 30 days to 2,500 bucks because the next thing I do, I may just do it for a week straight, get the information out there, and then have it as a recorded version later. All right. I mean, it's coming. 
like I, the how to repair your credit thing because it's I'll just tell you the secret it's per it's being persistent because I had some medical stuff that was true it took me about six months to get rid of it but I got it off of there <laughs> and uh Richard says he should be at 50,000 on Monday which is pretty freaking awesome in four weeks Okay, a lot of people want the credit course. You got to do a lot of research on that, but we'll talk about that. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, square and square reader are the same. Because the square reader is the little white thing that goes into your phone. And oh, just a quick tip for anyone that has a problem like swiping. If you have an iPhone 5, it's already at the bottom, but just turn your phone or whatever over, and it's so much easier to swipe that way. I don't know why, but it is. Okay, let me write this down. A lot of people want <laughs> the credit webinar. And there's going to be the Power of Six, Digital Products. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that's going to go into 30 days to 2500 bucks. Tony has a love hate relationship with Richard. <laughs> Richard's been through a lot. Richard has actually failed more than I have. He's gone through a lot. And that's something I've noticed that people, that's what I'm saying. If you don't give up, you will eventually get there. I can't tell you when, but you will. This is true. If you highlight the text on the Apple computer, you can have, you can activate speech and have a robotic audio book. This is what I'm doing with my audio books. And this is one of the reasons that I did this course a certain way. It's not stiff. Uh, I've listened to a lot of audiobooks, and some of them bore me to tears. They literally bore me to tears. And I thought about that. Okay, if I'm bored. So my audiobooks are going to be more like dramatic readings with you know all kinds of stuff. Because the thing is, I listen to audiobooks that are nine hours long. I listen to audiobooks that are ten hours long. I get through them because they're audiobooks, and I'll, you know, I'll listen each day. But it's just like, you know, toward that last bit, it's just like, oh, God, oh, God, my eyes are... I mean, you ever get so bored that tears are literally coming out? That's where I was with some of these books. And it's like, huh, make them exciting. <laughs> Tony, so we can work our pimp to death so we can be on the beach with you next time. That's funny. But there's a lot of stuff that's coming. Uh, I'm going to, like, you know, teach you. Because Square Market has really done some nice stuff. Eddie Moore, do you think the service industry is dead? Labor costs possibly going up, people doing things for cheap. I think there's two service industries. There's the high-end service industry and there's the low-end. That's based on price. Um, you know, like my consulting, talk about my consulting business, which I really just started putting a lot of emphasis on because I had so many things going on. I'm four fifty an hour and I get it and people come back, which means they're getting value. I didn't have as many consulting clients when I was at $30 an hour. I didn't. I, I mean, seriously, I was getting like one every two months or something like that, 30 bucks an hour. I wasn't. So when you talk about, you know, labor costs, you know, and this is going to be extremely crass, but I'm going to do it. Because you've ever been to Vegas, you know, there's prostitutes everywhere. They'll, you, you see a chick at the bar and she's looking at you and you know that you're not in her league, so to speak. Chances are that's what that is. A lot of those girls make three fifty, four hundred bucks an hour, and they're just average looking. You take the same chick, and you take her to some of the place, and she couldn't get that. It's just the expectations that you're in Vegas, and this is what it's going to cost, regardless of what she looks like. So what I'm saying, raise the expectation that you know, for whatever service business you're going to get, there's going to be a cost, and people will pay it. I know it's crazy, but they will pay it. It's um. You have to think that you're that valuable. That's where it really starts. You really, really have to believe it from your core to the outside. Because the thing is, I know that I can talk to someone on the phone for an hour or an hour and a half, because usually they're never an hour. It's like usually an hour, 15 minutes to an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. And they will come away with stuff that they can use to build their business and make it better. Everyone that's talked to me 
I've given them enough information that that one thing justified the phone call where it's like, yeah, we're going to make way more, a lot of money off this one thing. So you got to think about how much value you're bringing to the table with your service business. Uh, here's the way <laughs> the labor industry is still wide open. I can't get helpers who would show up, be sober if they manage the first two. They can't speak English. Yeah, because we've become a service sector economy in the United States of America. It really, really is. And it's once again, it goes back to your mindset because the guy that I was in 1997, 98, uh, 99, I couldn't have did this because I, I wouldn't have believed I was able to create a course that people would show up for for 30 days. In my mind, I was like, ah, I can't do that. No one's going to listen to that. You really, really have to start believing in yourself more. Yeah, this one is long because this is the last one <laughs> because I'm not cutting this off. So, you know, as long as people ask questions, I will be here because this will I can tell you, this is going to be a mainstay of doing webinars this type of way because what I what I learned is it was easier for me to stay on point because say you do a webinar like every Monday which can be cool for you know if it's like you're just going to be in and out but what I've discovered is some of these things you just can't get done in two hours or three you just can't and this is probably this is 26 plus hours of content right here which is going to take a person 30 some days to go through or some people like to two and four hours a day, but after a while, when they start running into those tasks, they're like, oh, this is going to take a little bit more time. Now, this is the last uh, well, 30 days to 2,500. The beta is done. You know, this it's been proven, it's been tested, and there will be more content in 30 days, $2,500. But this is the last one for this course. There's going to be a lot more that's coming. <laughs> told me Baptist minister and finality don't mean immediately. <laughs> I love that. Uh, let's see. In one of the homeworks, you told us to do a raffle for five to ten bucks, but you went out and put your raffle for twenty five. Should we raise our prices for the raffle too? I put out a raffle for ten. No one liked it. I changed it up and did one that was requested, and. That's kind of the reason I did that because I actually did something that I already do. Because if you remember, part of the raffle was to do something you've never done before. And also, let's talk about that. I have done many, many raffles. And the thing is, just to let you know, how you word it is very important. Um, typically, a lot of people look at raffles as scams or something like that, or something that should be done at a church or a Nonprofit only. So use the word contest and give them something for free to make it more palatable just to spare yourself some craziness. Uh, Michael, what were the last four days originally? Oh, it's going to be about incorporations and stuff. Why you should incorporate, how you should incorporate some esoteric stuff. Because the thing is, the first leg was to get you started. The second leg was to groom what you were doing. And the third leg was leg was to like shape it all up because I don't believe anyone should spend any money for an LLC or corporation until they know that the business is going to make money. You just piss the money down the drain if you do that. You know, unless you have different uses for that LLC or corporation, I should say. Uh, Justin, I'd like to say thanks. You helped me to look at things from a different point of view. Very cool. Uh, Wally. Hey, Glendon. Long time fan. First time caller. <laughs> Here's my question. <laughs> I like that. First time caller. Let's say you had your business rolling and you're earning income cash. How do you spread your deposit so it doesn't raid any red flags? Do you set up multiple accounts of different institutions? Keeps deposit small. Thanks. <laughs> Wally B wants a quick course on money laundering, which is a federal felony. Um, But I'll go for it. It's typically that whole thing about $9,000 and $10,000 it's kind of a red herring. If the teller thinks what you're doing is suspicious, she can report you at 500 bucks. So essentially what you want to do, and then this is just, you know, hypothetically, depending on you've got a lot of cash, um, 
You can go to the post office and buy postal money orders. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't really know. You can buy a postal money order and you can go back to the post office and cash it at the post office. So, you know, postal money orders last for a long time. I think six months, I believe. So if you wanted to convert a lot of money into some safe haven currency and not put it in the bank, you can just go buy a bunch of postal money orders and whenever you need some loot, you can just go to the post office and cash it if they have the cash. Uh, that's one way of not putting money in an institution if you don't want to. Just saying, just saying, not saying you're trying to avoid the police or the feds or anything, but that's a way you can do it. Another way, and I've seen this done, is people still put money in storage lockers. They still do. I just, <laughs> people still put money in storage lockers. People do not believe me, but I know someone who does this. And that's another way, 24-hour access. Now, I would say if you're going to do that, uh, make sure it's climate control. They tend not to catch fire as often. But, yeah, just be real creative. Uh, Jay, thanks for the motivation and insight. Much appreciated. This is Chris. The biggest thing I had to handle since I started down this path is loss. Loss of my wife. Friends don't want to talk to me that, that much because I refuse to deal with their drama. The only drama I have to handle is baby mama drama. <laughs> that could be enough, man. That could be enough. Okay. All right. So. We're having a fire set, but that's pretty much it. If you want to get into the Facebook group and there's going to be another announcement next week, just letting you know, and I'm going to leave it at three ninety nine. And actually I'm going to just delete the seven ninety nine because you know, that could create a problem, but there, there's a lot more that's coming a lot more. And I'll give people to the end of the month before I go from three ninety nine because that's at that point it may be four it may be five hundred bucks just depending on the other stuff that I'm doing. But I'll leave that at that. And the reason I went there is just more people I mean seriously just more people went with the lifetime option than the uh, monthly subscription. Just did. You know it's a better deal. Byron, post office now has a 3,000 limit on money orders without a whole lot of questions. Got to spread out over several post offices. <laughs> Let's just say this. I know when the limit used to be 750, now it's a thousand bucks. Um, that's pretty interesting. In the way, success to each one of you. Tony is cracking me up. Okay, I'm going to shut it down. I want to say thanks to everybody that came out. I've had a lot of fun and understand there will be more webinars. It just won't be this long, but there's other stuff that's coming and it's coming very soon. All right. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for being guinea pigs. And as always, I'll see you on the good side. Yeah, let's see. I already know that it quit.